All right, kia ora koutou, ko bella aho. Uh, so our, our team spanned over two countries, Aussie and Aotearoa, Luke in Melbourne and Sam and I in Tamaki Makoto. So right from the start, we developed a strong narrative to inform our design. Our interest in exploring how our nohonga could re represent the relationship between Ranginui and Papatuanuku, land and sky, and their unborn child, Ruomoko, Atua of volcanoes and earthquakes. The name Te Whakatō Henehene refers to our narrative. All right, so um, this diagram illustrates our narrative and how it informed the form and structure of our nohonga. So in Te Ao Māori, the creation story begins with Te Kore, the void, the darkness and emptiness of space. This is where Ranginui and Papatuanuku lived with their children in a tight marital embrace. It was their son Tane Mahuta who managed to separate his parents to create Te Ao Marama, the realm in which we currently exist, which is the world of light and knowledge. The separation caused grief to Ranginui and Papatuanuku, so their youngest child, Ruomoko, was left with his mother to warm and comfort her. The sorrow of Ranginui is the rain we experience, as his tears fall on his wife, which causes her to stir. This upsets Ruomoko, and with his fiery nature he erupts, disrupting the land, forcing raw red earth to the surface. Once he settles, he, his marks left behind remain as permanent ridges and striations in the land. And so the design captures the endless cycle of Ruomoko, pushing the earth to the surface, and the tears of Ranginui's sorrow erodes the, work, the earth back to the Papatuanuku. So the design topography connects human with nature through earth and timber elements that merge to create a cohesive relationship that both grow and manifest over time. The design explores the interrelationships and tensions between man-made and nature through Te Ao Māori principles where all physical and spiritual things are connected. And now Sam will touch on how we captured our narrative into the nohonga design. So we started the process obviously trying to um, express Ruamoko's presence and uplift from underneath um, the ground plane. So we, we really wanted to create something that's sculptural and singular in form. Um, we weren't interested in the idea of creating an overt seat which sat disconnected from the land it sits upon. Um, so to do this, we employed 56 fin profiles, which come together along the central spine elements and interlock to create a solid structure. Um, the fins are set out at 200 mil centers, and they compress toward the middle to 30 mil centers, which is where we have our seating occupation for up to two adults. Uh, the fins are at the ends, they're centred at 200mm centres, obviously, and there's cavities in between these, which we're um, proposing to infill with the scoria, um, soil media mix, and a vegetated top layer. And it's this green cavity, this infill, which is a key thread in the stitch between nohonga and land. The fins are made from 18mm plywood CNC routing profiles, um, each individual and unique in their own profile shape. Um, and I guess this affords us a bit of flexibility in terms of um, the makeup of the seat. We are, um, it's, a, it's adaptable, it's flexible, and it's um, easy to transport and disassemble and assemble. Um, the colour red is a representation of Rua Mokos, um presence, which Gala spoke to earlier. Um, and yeah, we, um, we had a great time um, doing this design process, and it was a welcome distraction during lockdown. Um, started the process with a quick, um, quick fire sketch process, which, which really um, gave us a clear direction heading into the generative design stage of the, of the thing. So yeah, thanks to um, Brick Bay and um, NZILA for putting it on. Thanks. Thanks.